Pokemon Sword and Shield are proving to be some of the most controversial uh, games ever released in the Pokemon franchise. Now, we're I'm just talking the mainline games as including spinoffs. I know some people debate whether Let's Go is a spinoff or a mainline game. That was obviously fairly controversial last year just because it's a Gen 1 remake and a Gen 1 remake with motion controls and all these things that people were thinking were to make the game a little bit too casual friendly. Uh, I personally enjoyed the games, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? Different strokes for different folks. They still finished at a Metacritic rating of 79 and 80, depending on which version you looked at. I know it's really weird that there's version-specific reviews, uh, especially for those games, which are practically the same game with different Pokemon, but it is what it is. Uh, people uh, generally uh, thought those games were just okay uh, to pretty good. And they ended up selling almost 11 million units on Switch. It's not quite there yet, uh, but it probably will hit 11 million uh, before it's all said and done. But it sold a majority of that, about 10 million of it, literally during the launch period. So, uh, and that launched last holiday. So it didn't really have a long tail of sales. Uh, 10 million is nothing to scoff at. That is higher than some uh, prior games in the Pokemon franchise. It's the first time there's been a, a quote-unquote mainline Pokemon game in HD. Uh, but I don't know. Um, it, it didn't have the tail of sales Pokemon usually has. Pokemon usually has a year or two of sales uh, that just kind of continue, especially since Pokemon Go has released on phones and has really reinvigorated people to buy Pokemon games. Uh, Sword and Shield came out last week and uh it, it's got review scores that are not exactly fantastic in comparison to the rest of the series uh, it's sitting in 81 right now on metacritic i don't know if it's going to go any lower than that uh definitely doesn't feel like it's going to go any higher as more reviews are coming in so it'll be interesting to see if it ever drops to an 80 uh but right now it's holding holding firm at 81 which is one of the worst rated pokemon games uh in the series ever if you don't count the let's go games and yet, despite all of this, uh, despite the, the poor reviews, despite the backlash, I think we all know that there's a lot of backlash for these games, uh, particularly the, maybe the biggest backlash is over the no national decks, but uh, more than that, there's been backlash over animations, there's been backlash over visuals. Uh, it's, it's pretty undeniable there are times in this game that they are using some pretty low poly low poly stuff i think digital foundries uh actually went through the game now and has proven that let's go pikachu and let's go eevee at times are using some extremely low polygon count textures things that feel like they might have been ripped from the 3ds which is really weird in a game that's being displayed in 1080p but well you know what it is what it is um you know, hashtag Game Freak's lazy or, or, or whatever people like to throw out there. Um, you know, we, we're not developers on this game. We don't understand the tight scheduling. We don't understand the pressure they're under. Uh, and it's, it's weird, too, because Pokemon is one of the biggest IPs in the world. And uh, it, it feels weird to see the games, which are a staple of that IP, that's really got the entire IP going in the first place before the shows. Um kind of treated uh in a way like it's not a triple a game does that make sense it's a it's almost a an almost an annual franchise at this point uh but it's not even treated like a triple a annual franchise like they used to do with assassin's creed and call of duty it's kind of treated as like this b-tier game but it's a b-tier game that's more popular than almost anything else nintendo has that comes out and i know game freak makes it and nintendo only owns part of it but, all, but i mean it, it, it's this interesting situation with this massive ip where it's finally on home consoles and it doesn't necessarily feel like a home console game even though it might be the best pokemon game ever made and uh that's up for the eye of the beholder reviews say it's not uh but you never know so why are we talking about it now today? I, I haven't played the game. I can't I can't go into my personal opinions on whether the game is good or not yet or, or my adventures through the game, which I, I want to log uh, in a future video series, even though I know the Pokemon company hates when people put up footage of Pokemon games. So uh, I'm really hoping that uh, they let me get away with what I want to do with Pokemon. And we'll see how well that goes and if you guys enjoy my, my little um, <laughs> vlog series through the game. Um, but... What I want to what I want to actually focus on here are the fact that maybe all of this is grossly exaggerated. Um, there's been a lot of negative reactions, negative reviews, this and that, but the sales for the game might be breaking records. Now, uh, we don't have official numbers in yet. 
Uh, but we're hearing from retailers. Uh, I have some inside sources myself from a couple of retailers. Um, there's also some people on Twitter, in particular, at Benji Sales, backing up this data. And we do have some, some UK chart data officially as well from GameIndustry.biz. Uh, but it looks like Pokemon Sword and Shield not only shipped, right? We're, we're fucking shipped. Uh, more units to retailers worldwide than Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and potentially more than any other prior Pokemon game for launch. Uh, it looks like the sell-through, which is how many actually sold, is going to do some pretty insane numbers. We're hearing things like in the United States alone with only one day of sales data that Pokemon Sword and Shield has sold 55% plus more in just the U.S. alone, uh, than it has for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee on its first two days of sales. So there were two days charted uh, back back at launch, and that's the two days that a majority of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee sold. And then launch day alone, Sword and Shield destroyed those numbers. Um, Sword and Shield might become the best-selling Pokemon game of all time. And that's basically what we're talking about here. And if it becomes the, the best-selling, the fastest-selling Pokemon game of all time, you know Nintendo, you know the Pokemon company, they're going to come out you know, in a, in a week or two here and, and tout that, especially uh, once all the figures are finalized everywhere, which they're not finalized everywhere. We don't have final numbers in Japan and Europe and all that, but uh, we know in the UK it, it debuted higher uh, than any other Pokemon game has debuted in quite some time. Uh, we know the games themselves cost $20 a piece more than any Pokemon game has ever costed before. Uh, and Well, not any Pokemon game, but any Pokemon uh, mainline entry game has. So we already know it's going to probably be the highest grossing Pokemon game of all time just because it's 20 bucks more per copy or if you get the dual pack, 40 bucks. But um, what, what I think is interesting in this is it's not just that it's going to be a massive financial success no matter what happens, no matter what negativity say. It's that people are buying it anyways. I heard a lot of Pokemon fans, um, and, and this is the internet, um, I heard a lot of Pokemon fans on the internet say that uh, they're not going to buy these games. They're going to boycott these games not because there are no national decks, because it's not, you know, it, it's it's not a true revolutionary leap for Pokemon, or we don't like this cut feature or this change feature to how online works from this to the YCOM stuff. And uh, I hear you. I hear all this critique. I hear all this criticism. But this might be a situation, and we've seen situations like this before on the internet in particular, where the minority is just outvoicing the majority. A majority of people that are interested in Pokemon, a majority of people that are going to buy Pokemon, I'm not even going to say that they're kids because I don't know that. I don't have the statistics in front of me to prove that it's kids buying Pokemon, although I know kids are still interested in Pokemon. Uh, but what I do know is that if these sales figures are true, if this thing's destroying Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, if this thing has the potential to destroy Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and, and even the Gen 1 games, which I think still hold the top sales spot, uh, if it ends up selling 15, 20, 30 million units, which it would be insane, I think 15 to 20 is probably more realistic, but even if it gets 15 to 20, uh, that would still be among the best-selling Pokemon games ever. I, I got to say that it kind of feels like the naysayers are just the minority uh and, and and don't get me wrong everyone's opinion matters everyone's opinion on an individual level matters especially to that person like i can't sit here and tell you that you're going to love pokemon sword and shield because that's going to be up to the individual um some people can't get past something some people aren't going to like the bugs that are in the game i heard that there's a bug uh with how the data is hand handled with ycom over people's uh, wi-fi networks and and even wired networks and it's affecting roku sticks for some reason because the ycom data packets are very similar to the data packets that come from roku sticks uh, and we use Roku all over my house, so it's going to be interesting to see if it affects me. Uh, Roku is apparently working on an update for that, by the way, uh, to change how their packets work so it can distinguish between the Pokemon packets and uh, their packets because uh, the Pokemon packets, apparently, the, the biggest issue with Pokemon isn't that the packets are similar. It's that even when you're not using your Switch, if it's just in sleep mode, I guess Pokemon Sword and Shield is always communicating to the Internet. Um, even in sleep mode, you have to literally power the switch all the way down. So a lot of people are, um, are is it, isn't that interesting too as well? Cause the game doesn't really tell you that it's doing that by the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, I don't know. That's, that's an issue. There's been other bugs as well. Besides, besides the complaints about low polygon stuff at times, which I, I honestly think low polygon models and low polygon, um, things like, uh, the, you know, the bark on the trees, uh, that, that, that really, <laughs> 
that shouldn't be happening in, in, in 2019. Um, and fans are obviously, you know, outraging um, to the point that they're adding Pokemon back into the game. Right now, they're working on adding in the Pokemon models from Let's Go Peach or Let's Go Eevee because those are all already in HD on Switch. Uh, and those are going to be a lot easier to add in. And they've proven that over time, fans are going to be able to restore the entire national decks to the game if people w would like it to be obviously you have to hack your switch and all this stuff so i'm not saying you should do that but fans that care about it are making it happen anyways uh which some people think this proves how lazy game freak and the pokemon company is i again i can't speak to the development cycle of the game uh, i know some people are worried if game freak employees are happy if they're not happy there's a whole bunch of conflicting stories out there about that but what i do know is these games are selling incredibly well and i think it's completely overblown um some of this criticism I think a vast majority of people that play Pokemon or have interest in playing Pokemon games don't care about the national decks. I don't think they care about um, the cut features. I don't think they care about the new features as much either. I think a vast majority of people who play Pokemon just like playing Pokemon for Pokemon. They don't necessarily care about having a complete national deck. They don't care about all these finer details. They just care about turning on the game and having fun catching pocket monsters uh, and using those pocket monsters in, in battles and beating the story mode and maybe trading a few times with their friends. I don't. I think a majority of people that play Pokemon are just uh, they're, they're casual about it, I guess for lack of a better term. I think what happens when we're on the Internet are the smaller – uh, portions of, of of a community get greatly enhanced and feel like they have a much grander voice than they probably do overall. Uh, in this case, I think a lot of the Pokemon fans that are speaking up are not not necessarily from the competitive Pokemon scene because that's a whole other um, you know a whole other sector. Uh, but I think they're from these hardcore fans uh, that have probably been with Pokemon for decades, uh, if not at least the last decade, and. Uh, have these expectations they put onto the games that uh, the Pokemon Company and Game Freak haven't put onto them themselves. Now, the National Deck stuff is something they did put on themselves, and that's their, their own kerfuffle to deal with. But I, I do think that a lot of the complaints, a lot of the this, a lot of the that, is being greatly overblown uh, by a minority of Pokemon fans. Now, these Pokemon fans are probably the most passionate about Pokemon, but I, I think that sales are proving. Um, I think that Everyone I'm talking to that's playing the game right now seems to be having a good time. I think, in general, Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to be doing great, going to be doing better than the series has maybe ever done, and is going to prove to be almost fan favorites in a way. Now, uh, to give uh, some credence to people who might enjoy the way Pokemon is, as an example, no national decks, some people think there's too many Pokemon. So no national decks gets rid of that gotta catch them all pressure of trying to catch, you know, 700, 800, 900 Pokemon, however many there are now after Sword and Shield, right? It kind of relieves that pressure of needing to do that. Now you can just focus on the Pokemon that are in the games themselves, right? Um, you you can relieve some pressure um, off of people who that care about that. Now, I know some people say, well, I just carry them over game from games. So it's easy for me, but not everyone's like that, especially if you're a casual Pokemon fan. You might not be transferring all your Pokemon game to game. So then you might care that, uh, you know, you don't have to catch, you know, 700, 800, 900 Pokemon um, or, or trade for them and all that to make it happen. So I think that there's just a large contingency of Pokemon players that just don't give a crap about what reviews say. They don't give a crap about what the hardcore Pokemon fans say. They just care about themselves and having fun. And I think a vast majority of people, the 10, 15, 20 million people that end up buying Sword and Shield, are going to be having a blast. And the numbers are going to prove so large that uh, Game Freak and the Pokemon Company and Nintendo are going to want to repeat it again next year and the year after and the year after. I think uh, Pokemon is proving its sales power. It's proving that um, they don't have to necessarily go all in with a AAA budget and four years of development uh, to, to do something crazy with the games to be a big seller. Like, they kind of have to do with Zelda. Now, Zelda will always sell well. You're always going to get three, four, five million sales on a Zelda game just because it's a well established IP and all the games are generally really fun, even Triforce Heroes. But 
Um, you do know if you do spend the, the, the three, four, five years developing the game, you can get a Breath of the Wild and sell $15 million, which is something the franchise has never done before. So there's an advantage uh, to doing it both ways, having your Link's Awakenings or your Link Between Worlds or, or whatever, and then also having your giant four or five-year projects because they could serve uh, different markets and you can get different types of profits along the way. Same with, with spinoffs like Hyrule Warriors. Same with spinoffs for Pokemon. You know, there's a, there's a ton, there's a billion spinoffs for Pokemon. So I overall think that Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to break records. I think Pokemon Sword and Shield is going to make a majority of fans happy. And to all the naysayers out there, I guess it's almost too bad, so sad. Um, this isn't the Pokemon game for you. Pokemon might never be what you want it to be again. Uh, and all I could say is welcome to how I have felt for the last decade. Um... I really enjoy Generation 1 and Generation 2 of Pokemon. Those are still my favorite generations of Pokemon is Generation 1 and Generation 2. Um, I enjoyed the series a bit in, th in the third generation and the fourth generation, and then something just happened. I'm not sure what happened, but ever since then, uh, Pokemon has felt like it's drifting further and further away from me caring about it. Uh, and there's a, a lot of reasons for this, from the little little minute complexities they added in that I, that I don't think need to be there, um, and a whole bunch of other things that have just turned me off from the Pokemon franchise. And now, if you're one of those hardcore fans that's going through that right now with Sword and Shield, if you are feeling rejected by these games, if you're feeling like this is just not what I want, the future of the Pokemon um, on, you know, series based on all the interviews is just not what I want, welcome to how I felt a decade ago. Um... And I think sometimes we need to be okay letting it go. As Elsa from Frozen says, not to be ironic, but I have seen Frozen 2 comes out this week. Um, sometimes you have to just let it go. It's okay for a game to kind of move in a direction that you don't like. It's just the way it is. There are people that don't like the direction of Zelda with Breath of the Wild. And it's okay to not like that direction, but... Ultimately, games are going to go in, go in different directions for different reasons. I obviously wish that they would do a huge, massive budget on Pokemon and create this massive Breath of the Wild-style Pokemon game, but it's just probably not going to happen. Um, we're we're going to get you know extensions of what they've done in the past. They're going to keep trying to improve on it you know, every generation and every game, but you're just going to keep getting what Pokemon's always been. Uh, maybe different this time around without the national deck, so things are changing a bit, but uh, you're either going to fall out of love with Pokemon and give up on the franchise and be done with it as a Sword of Shield, or you're going to love it and keep playing it. And I don't think there's a lot of middle ground in between. So personally, Sword and Shield is going to do fine, and it's okay for you to move on to. Uh, we all move on. There are games I used to play I don't anymore, and uh, there's games I play right now that maybe I won't in the future. So um, for now, I'm, I'm pretty excited to get my hands on Sword and Shield. Uh, I have to figure out which one I'm buying. Um, I know I screwed up last time and said like, oh, the red one is, is this and that, like I, I, or the blue one is shield and it's actually the sword. I well, whatever. Okay. This shows you how little I've been paying attention. At least I know what the, the games are called. Right. So, uh, explosive sales, potentially record breaking critiques be damned. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rovajets from the Center Prime. Thanks for tuning into this video, this kind of discussion, look at the aftermath of Pokemon Swords release. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.